everyone, this is Dilanika Edivacharige from Dilanika's Talk Show and welcome to the ninth episode. So today, we are going to interview a person who has excelled in medical arena, studies as well as sports. He is the chairman of Sri Lankan Anti-Doping Agency, the senior lecturer at the Medical Faculty, University of Kalania, and also a member of the Board of Medicine Studies and also an old boy at St. Thomas's College, Mount Lavinia. So, anyway, before we meet our guest, just a quick reminder to go hit the subscribe button and ring the little notification bell. You'll get the notifications right away when I post a video. Also, give a like to this video and check out my Instagram account, which the link will always show below. So, allow me to introduce Senior Professor Arjuna De Silva. Hi, sir. Hi, how are you? I'm hmm. fine, thank you so much. Thank you for accepting my invitation. Yeah, it's a pleasure. Sorry, I got late. It's okay. <laughs> Firstly, let us begin with some few details about your childhood. Right. I don't know that I can uh, think back that far. Which, uh, uh, I feel very old when I'm being interviewed by you. <laughs> So anyway, so yes, I was unfortunately an only child, and uh, uh, but uh, I had a, I grew up uh, in Nigambo, well. so that's a village, Katan actually, and uh, so I had uh, a lot of interaction though as only child, and then I went to school at St Thomas's, Mount Lavinia, uh, but still. For the holidays, I used to always go uh, back to the village. So I had a good uh, balance of uh, town and uh, village life, which I think now children in your generation unfortunately don't have the experience of having, like uh, bathing in rivers, not on holiday, but just going, uh, going around in a bullock cart, right? Uh, driving a tractor, things, uh, things like that. Uh, I think you, know, you all want, uh, you guys don't unfortunately get a chance to experience. Yeah. So, tell us what is your biggest achievement in your career, and what are the challenges you face, and also how did you overcome those? Yeah. So. I think uh, there are so many challenges you get, but uh, I think one of the biggest challenges is when the, uh, during the JVP period, the universities were closed for almost four years. Uh, and then so many people, including, I mean, I have, uh, I had two uncles who were doctors themselves, and one uncle who was uh, former Chief Justice Sarat Silva. My father is a doctor, was a doctor as well. So my father, of course, told me to continue medicine. Uh, but the other thing I want to tell people is that medicine is something that you definitely shouldn't be forced to do, right? You should actually have a passion for it and want to do it, right? You can't force anyone to do Not that you can't, you can, but uh, it's not going to, that person's life is going to be uh, very hard. So medicine is a lot of, uh, it's like a marathon, right? it's not like a sprint. It's always hard work, but it's very rewarding. So you can't force people to do it, but uh, if you want. So I had a passion to do it, so I wanted to do it, but uh, both my uncles said to change. But who are doctors? But actually the, the doc one uncle was a chief justice. He was not chief justice at that time, but he is the one who said, he, or, he and my father said to continue in it. So that was a very stressful time because, uh, so 
greatest achievement i think uh, is uh, so getting a degree from uh, in the sense uh, msc research msc from oxford uh, that was very rewarding and uh, i think that was uh, good because that introduced me to world class research and how that it's done and at what level it's done and how the research methodology and all that right so you could uh, say that that was the who have been supporting you mm. to make this a success yeah you're a successful person that's right the success is uh, really it's a relative that trust is a relative term uh, so anyway uh, yes my parents right along were mother and father really supported me in that and uh, so i think uh, that was uh, very important because uh, Uh, especially my father my mother as well but since my father was a doctor he could he guided me a lot uh, to how to go and like how to organize myself and do things uh, of course you don't you you as you realize that your, your parents tell you you don't take all the uh, information to so looking in hindsight if you take if you took 100% of the advice Uh, so many other things you could have done but at least uh, he helped to guide uh, in me in a lot of ways so uh, that and uh, my uncle also helped me to guide yes, so and now my wife yes, so when i was searching details about your childhood i realized that you were a good drover <laughs> Tell us how did you manage to do your studies as well as sports? Is yes, that's that's very smart of you to have found that. <laughs> yeah, so I did draw and that that's as a in school and then for Sri Lanka as well. So uh, those friends actually who I got to know in school and and doing drawing, uh, they are still like brothers uh, to me. So because I was an only child. I didn't have one, but they were still very, very close to me. So, uh, yes, yeah, sports and studies is difficult to do, uh, especially now it's becoming even more difficult. Yes. But uh, I think that's the important balance because in life you have to realize that you can't win every time, uh, and uh, if you sometimes if you stick to studies only, uh, you will keep on winning, and at one point you will. And you can't keep on. In one point you will see, and you won't be able to handle that. You know, we have seen that a lot in scholars who have just uh, done only studies. But if you have done both, uh, even though it's hard, uh, those people have a more balanced attitude to life, and they can handle. Because in sports, you have you won't win every time. So you will lose, and you will know to get up from that and come. So that's important. So for that time management is important, right? So you have to balance the uh, your studies and your sports. But I think it's important for all the young kids to do both. Yes. Time management and also please to give a little message to our young audience. Right. They will truly inspire. So yes, I think uh, well, I am inspired by what you are doing. It's very good. <laughs> Thank you. I so wouldn't, much. I wouldn't have been able to do that at twelve, right? Yes. So that's fantastic. So the, I think the young have a lot of uh, potential, and you have uh, unlimited knowledge with the internet, yes. right? So it's the important thing is to use that knowledge well and that uh, thing, and to be careful of uh, the technology. either overtaking your life and being just tied down to that or since you are young you can i mean be caught up in that and there is a uh, possibility of being abused by that technology so the young kids and the parents should be aware of that always and protect the children uh, so that's also very important so those two things how to use the technology to the maximum and get benefit from it so that you can improve and you can get knowledge good knowledge and at the same time to be protected from the sector yes that was a really 
good message and also it's really important to us. So thank you so much for joining with me. And lastly, I have a surprising question for you. Right. What do you think it is going to be? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about my show? I think it's fantastic. That's what thank I said. You so much. And um, all the best and all success. It was so amazing to have you on my show. I wish you and your loved ones a great, bright future. Thank also, thanking everyone for watching this video and I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to give a like to this video and check out my Instagram account. For now, goodbye and stay safe. This is Dilanika Adiracharige from Dilanika's Dog Show. Goodbye. And also, more new videos are coming soon. Bye.